they have to leave this qualifier and not be going to the major. That's going to be really tough. Stewie and Nothing are holding over at the A-bomb site. We've got Renegade setting up for a classic A-type push, but Azza is going to check the underpass and probably going to try and reconnect through connector in the middle there and making sure that there's not too much of a trick going on. You know, no one's sneaking up behind him or anything like that. Let's see how it all unfolds. Stewie waiting in shadow for the moment, and they're all going to come around the corner right now. The focus is on nothing, so Stewie has to come up big here. He's missing the shots, and he's going to go down to your Stilo. That's a nice frag early on. Good shot from nothing as they try and hunt him down. And get the kill on JKS. The bomb is being planted in the background here. So still a three on four here. A Shroud picks off Yam, and Justilo trying to keep up with it, but nothing actually coming up big. Shroud with another kill, and that leaves Ricky all alone. Going to go down to the corner. Shroud coming up big here for his team which is nice. You remember the last time we saw Shroud on this map? He was stuck alone, isolated in the B-bomb site, never saw any action. That's the one thing here is that uh, Renegades, they have a lot of information to go off of when it comes to facing Cloud9 on Mirage. Cloud9 have only played Mirage so far in this qualifying tournament. They've played it twice, and well, neither time has gone too hot for them. So Renegades, they do have a coach behind them. That's one edge that they have over Cloud9. Cloud9 still don't have a coach and are frankly like, you're kind of wondering, when are they going to get one? Because I think that they're a team that desperately needs one. But, uh, oh, okay, hi, Sponge. Of course you're sad. You've got your ex-teammates, you know, with their lives on the line here. Yeah, listen, I heard Sponge yesterday, uh, not in public, but in private, uh, say that he would renounce his Australian citizenship because of that loss to CLG. So I think he's already pretty uh, sad at the moment. But maybe this could change his mind. Nothing going to be on the other side, though. Picking up a couple of kills there, slowing down the incoming push. Otherwise, maybe they could have got the bomb plant here. But now it's looking unlikely as they're going to be the last one left. And quad kill for nothing. Yeah. Not that bad at all. I miss Sponge, by the way. Scar just farming some assists. Yeah, well, I mean... <laughs> He's been uh, he's been doing a lot of pro league, right, and some streaming. Yeah. So I mean, should it's he, just bring him to more events. Waiting until 2017, basically, to see more of them, man. Yeah. Uh, it'll happen. I, I believe. I believe. I mean, I think that Renegades right now are just glad not to be on Dust Two. Like both of these teams have actually, it went Cloud 9s way where they got to play Mirage three times in a row. Renegades have played Dust Two three times or twice in a row. So finally, Renegades get something to actually change it up here. They get to change maps and kind of change mood, hopefully. Even though it hasn't really started out too strong for them here. 2-0 lead for Cloud9 to begin, and Skadoodle with the aggressive scout. I like it. We've seen, well, yesterday when they played Mirage, Ska was a little bit more focused on window. He kind of really kept that op, that scout in mid. Curious to see if he's going to go Palace, if he's going to go B-Halls, if he's going to try and change it up the way he did on the first day when we saw Cloud9 playing on this map. Oh, nothing. Picking up another kill. He's really active in middle here, which is nice to see. Going to put up a Molotov. Ricky can't even take that fight. He actually has to run back, otherwise he'd be standing right on top of that one. As has also taken a bit of damage, but they have got him into the window. He's actually queuing around back to nothing there. It's going to be a great kill on him. Nice boost coming in. Sadly, he didn't expect Automatic to be there. Nearly gets the flick onto Ricky, but doesn't really work out. JKS is going to be going down, and that's now all oh, with a kill on Shroud there, or from Shroud. That will be a one-on-two for Yam. He has got pretty good health for it. Stewie is actually on the board now, too. Good on him. Finds one kill, but they're still trying to figure out where exactly Yam is right now with that bomb. And Yam, he's hunting for Stewie. He wants to be able to pick up a kill, turn this into a 1v1. He knows that Shroud is taking some damage as well, that they're both fairly low here. So this is definitely a winnable situation for Yam. Still 35 seconds left on this clock as well. But Cloud9 are doing a good job of just falling back. He's not going to get any kills. The only issue here is that with the time running low, okay, he's going to actually decide to stick on the A site. He had an option to go B if he wanted to, but it doesn't look like he's going to risk it. It looks like he wants to just stay on A. It's such a, I mean, there is no right or wrong choice here. It's all on instinct at this point. He has no idea where they are right now. For all he knows, one of them could be walking out Palace, but he's going to get the safe bomb plant. Now he's actually in an interesting position. This is very winnable. He's going to fall back, take the fight with Surround, and he comes up with a great headshot. Only takes a bit of damage. Stewie's had a lot of trouble right now. Sneaking in behind, he has got a defuse kit, but no more grenades, and Yam is playing this positionally absolutely perfect. This is beautiful Counter-Strike right here. Stewie's on the bomb, one second left. Yam, he's going to get it. The timing couldn't be better. A lot of credit to Yam. That is not easy. He made it look very easy. That's hard to play in a 1v2 like that. Yeah, that's tough. But when you don't have to worry about your teammates, you can just focus on your own game. Yam has got that level. He does have that cold blood, basically, that aspect to himself where he can actually come through for it. So a 2-1 scoreline now with Cloud9 having to spend some of that money or, or not. Only two rounds in. They don't have the bank yet to actually go for a buy. And we're going to have a technical pause coming in here because we've already dropped a player on Cloud9 to begin with. So Seems reasonable, yes. Ska. Yeah, we're going to have a reset of the round pretty soon here. All right. 
<laughs> nice. You know what? Just get another chair in there or put it on the TV and in the sofa and just have a good time. This is why you need a couch. This is why you need a couch. This is. And, and a bigger desk. Yeah, that too, actually. That kind of looked like student housing almost, you know, really like small, looked like a small room, right? And looked like a thrift store kind of where on, you just like find the desk and then nothing ever matches actually out of your furniture. On the other hand, there is much less room for all the mess that's on my desk, which is massive, but there, but it, most of it is just, you know, things that have gathered over the years mm -hmm. that, you know, the layers of things. Papers. Fourth round, yeah, and that's how it works. Fourth round is coming up here, and um, yeah, I mean, Cloud9 don't have the money because that was a third round by for Renegades. They got the bomb down in the first round, so that's pretty impressive, and it's going to set them right back in the game here. Three Galils in play, two AKs. That's absolutely fine given what they're up against. And if you're just tuning in, we have to set the tone here. Both of these teams are 0-2. And just to remind you how this format works, three wins, you're through to the major, three losses, and you're out of it. So both teams with their backs to the wall, it hasn't worked out for them on the first two days of, of this tournament. Going into the third one here, it's kind of do or die. And in a best-of-one format, that's always so tricky. It's so stressful right now for both of these teams. Shroud will find a kill on Azza, but it's still a man advantage here for Renegades, and they have the weapons advantage as well, as you guys can see. So fairly clean cut stuff. I mean, if we want to go to like recent results between both of these teams, they did meet in a best of one. And it was in the group stage at DreamHack not long ago, just a few weeks. And Renegades won 16 14 on Dust 2. So close game. But still, Renegades are kind of like up 1 0, I guess, in the land record over the past couple of months between both of these teams. See, it's going to continue. It'd be interesting if they could do it again here. I mean, Moses was pointing out that they've also met in sort of recent major qualifiers, and it's been Cloud9 that's been coming out on top. So. Could be a change of history here. Now, automatic saving the AK, obviously. You can't really go and win the, the the battle anymore, but maybe you could find a kill or something. That would be interesting. Can I go for the long range spray? That's actually quite effective. He doesn't have armor, so with the, with the aim punch in the play there, it's really difficult to get that kind of spray in, but he makes it work regardless. Double kill for him and saving the AK. A lot to get out of the round, and the rest of his team can buy no problem. Actually, him saving the AK means nothing can have a much better buy if he drops it for him, so that's not bad at all. How's Automatic doing so far on the scoreboard? Because it seems like he's kind of like a little hit or miss. Four kills, okay. I mean, the thing, like, I think we need to really focus on Automatic and Stewie. That is kind of the key combo for Cloud9 right now. Yeah. It has been for a while, but in particular in this major qualifier, first day and the second, Stewie was just key in getting any kind of momentum rolling for Cloud9. And while well, yesterday, Automatic dropped a 30 bomb versus Tyloo, so. Automatic showed up to play yesterday, but he's really going to have to go ham here if he wants to have a chance of getting his team through this. We're tied up 2-2 now, and it's a bye for both teams. And that's crazy when you say it like that. Automatic dropped the 30 bomb against Tyler when they still lost the match. And they still lost. That's... And well, it's funny because JKS did the same thing on Dust 2 and still lost. So it's it's been a tough fight for some of these players. Renegades and Cloud9 have got the individuals showing up. They just need to figure out how to get the team to work so that they can actually win these maps. Look at this great boost coming in. Automatic going to pick up the kill. He's actually lingering a bit. Grenade right on you, Stilo, but also nothing. I really like how nothing is playing this connector area right now. He's just aggressive enough to pick up a first kill, and then he's got to fall back and play it safe. You Stilo goes down, Skadoodle finally finding a kill as well, and this whole round is slowly disintegrating for Renegades. They're trying to find some fights in the middle, and they just won none of them. So hard to say what they would have ultimately done if they had. Nothing coming up with another double kill. He's at 9, 1, and 2. Not, I mean, Jordan has been playing better and better through throughout the last sort of weeks and months I feel like yeah which is very interesting it's just it's it's so this is what makes it so difficult to predict teams like cloud9 and renegades i feel like they live or die by their their individual play because you know automatic goes ham stewie goes ham i guess nothing is the one with the strong start here same could be said for renegades you're looking at jks you're looking at ricke to really get work work done on an individual level to get that team a win so it's kind of a you have a couple of you know you have some teams out there who still rely a bit on the tactics to carry them through, but some teams, you know, really do rely on the individual headshots. A good adjustment for Cloud9, though, to be winning that round after losing two in a row there. So if they continue to lose, then they would be thrown into that ugly cycle where, you know, you, you sort of have to force every other round or have to save every other round because mm -hmm. you just don't have the money for it. Now they are building a bit of a bank. Nobody died in the last round. See... Lowest is uh, 1,600 there on Stewie, so they're doing a pretty good job at the moment. And Renegades, with what, two flashbangs and one smoke in this round, 
with a bit of luck, maybe they can get a bomb plant if they get a good kill in. But actually, because of the setup for the Cloud9, they need more than just one kill. I think this should be fine, right? Stewie's in position in Shadow once again. Nothing is holding close on the side as well, so those guys can get some kind of crossfire going towards Connector if Renegades are able to actually make the run up. And they're already rotating automatic over as well to back up Skadoodle here. As I boosted up, but ska has got the angle. And really, Renegades are just playing this slow. And this is kind of becoming a hallmark of Renegades. This is, you know, speaking of Sponge, right, this is one of the main criticisms that he had watching his teammates, is that they're just so slow. They play slow, they don't take advantage, they don't push, they don't try and force anything. And there's a nice shot from Scott, a shot down as his boost. And while the push begins here from Renegades, with 30 seconds left on the clock. Nothing getting, I think, a bit anxious there. He was in an odd position, so they had a lot of different angles on him, but it works out anyway. They only lose uh, nothing, and that will be 4-2 in favor of Cloud9 here with the bank still growing for the American team. Yeah. Renegades on the other side, it, I mean, they could buy two AKs and some Galils in this round if they wanted to, but if they keep buying like that, it also puts them out of range of, say, AWPs and stuff like that. So they've made the hard choice and gone for another round here where it's upgraded pistols and some armor, and I, I don't blame them particularly for it. I think this is a this is not an unreasonable approach. I was about to see. I was about, I was wondering when they're going to go B in a meaningful way here, but that incendiary going down is going to actually hinder them somewhat. Shroud on the side is just going to spot out a still oh, instant headshot there. Beautiful work from Shroud, playing those angles, and well. You know, the thing is, you see three guys charging B Halls, that's great, but the bomb was dropped outside of B Halls. So, you know, even if they actually got, get some crazy headshot on Shroud and are able to go, you know, cascading onto the site, they don't have a bomb plant. And so, Renegades now, they have a smoke and a flash on Yam. And they're down two players. JK has been tagged down to 21. And Yam is dead. And that's the utility gone as well. So, this round is just nothing, really, for Renegades. It's, it's, look at that, not a single point of damage taken, in fact, on Cloud9. No, none at all. And we got to see the, uh, the long-range crab spray coming in from Stewie, which is incredibly annoying to play against. I really hate it when people do that, but um, it can be very effective if done in the right way. 5-2 is what we're looking at here with still nothing and Shroud on top. Quite excited to see Shroud doing well. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's, that's good for the team in general. Now we have Ricky with the AWP and we have all the utility we could possibly want on Renegades. They need to make something off it and look how quick they're going to be all the way up the A ramp. Stewie getting the first contact here. Going to pop flash his way in but actually he flashes himself as well. Not the best version of it. Now he's going to go for the fight right on top of the Monotop. You're still going to take him down immediately and survives on two health. Automatics in the middle trying to see if he can wrap around but that wrap is going to take quite a long time so Cloud9 have to stay alive. The bomb is going down on the other side. The rest of Cloud9 need to wait automatic here. Thought Shroud might have a moment. There's JKS. He's about to get Molotov out into the open. So Shroud gonna take that fight. JKS still finds a headshot and he lives. One HP. Who's still out? Two HP. JKS one HP. How close do you have to cut it, Renegades, for you to win a round? Automatic going Palace as well instead of going Pit. But they're running out of time right now. They do have two kits. Shroud and Automatic. Automatic still has his full set of nades as well. But they just have so little time to work with here. Yeah, this is insane. This flank is way too long. Automatic, he's going to try and sneak in. He gets the kill. The Molotov is out. Can they stop him? That block is blocking them right now. Two seconds left. They can't get the shot. Automatic, <laughs> he's going to make it win. Oh, my God. <laughs> How does that happen? That looked like the most ridiculous flank. Because once he goes Palace, it's, I actually lost my mind for a minute there. Oh, wait. No. Again, this is a major qualifier. I don't even... It's All the, five alive as well for Renegades. It's the fact that he gets the double kill, then puts out the Molotov, so they can't challenge him. Otherwise, he was in an open enough angle. No, but this is what's really key, is the fact that Shroud and Ska sack themselves. They just throw themselves out into the open to stop them getting out from pit. So Automatic, yeah, he's got the nades, he gets the smoke down, but his teammates are doing the right thing by just challenging Renegades nonstop, not allowing Renegades to get out of pit and to try and stop that defuse from going through. You Look can see the frustration from Yam, like the double, going for the full Nico there, double face palm. Yeah, he was he was devastated. That is the, exactly the kind of sort of screw up that will lose you the the major spot. That is so rough. It's it, just, it's it just really looked like he had miscalculated how much time he had. Like he was, you know, supposed to be going faster, and his teammates were were sort of waiting, and he never showed up, and then actually. 
It's all perfectly planned. That is some next level play coming out of Automatic. I love it. Now we're seeing the B play come in here from Renegades. That's enough of A. They've gone A eight times running, so might as well go B here in the ninth round. 6-2 lead and nothing to stop Ska from just wreaking havoc. Two kills from him. And Shroud's still alive on the site as well. Automatic shows up from short, and this is just nothing working out here for Renegades. And I don't mean nothing from Cloud9, because he's chilling behind a smoke. How fitting. In mid. Yellow wins the duel. Nicely done. But Automatic picks up a second kill. Three for Skadoodle. Two for Automatic. Ten kills for Automatic now, just sitting at the top of the scoreboard. But they have full utility. Not a single nade thrown out. Nothing really thrown out there to try and create an opportunity. They just tried to dry run at their Renegades, and a second timeout, back-to-back -back timeouts getting used here by Renegades. Just to remind you, they have four 30-second timeouts in each of these maps, and so Renegades, they're just, they're just throwing them out there. They know that they're under pressure. Should say this, though. We've seen Cloud9 on this map before being up 10-1 and still losing it. I don't want to keep bringing it up, but at the same time, there is some historical evidence that this team can malfunction if the if things go off the rails. It doesn't look like it is right now. I mean, they're playing a really solid game. 10-0-2 on automatic, nothing at 10-3-5, and, and then Shroud really close behind at 9-3-3. Three three. So this is, right now, all of them are doing a fantastic job. And it's not like Skadoodle and Stewie aren't doing anything either. Where is the, where's the breakthrough play from Renegades here? That's what we need. I mean, I'm looking at JKS. I'm looking at JKS, to be frank. I mean, he drops a 30 bomb versus CLG yesterday. I mean, plays like lights out ham. And yet, right now, he's sitting at two kills. And we're 10 rounds in. Skadoodle with the pick on Azza. And again, Scott playing window. And he really doesn't seem like he wants to change it up either. Second kill. That opens it up for Automatic to pick up the kill on Ustillo. And now these two flankers here, Azza and... Well, no, JKS, rather, and Rike. They're stuck. JKS will find a kill on nothing. That's fantastic. But Stewie's still alive in shadow. And that leaves it on Rike here to back off and ponder the meaning of life because he's 1v4 and he's already the closed meaning, in on. The meaning of a really short life, Sandler. He didn't have a lot of time to ponder it. It's already done. Ooh. Did he get that tag? He did get that tag through the edge, it looks like. Nice. It's not bad. You know, this is... And now, I mean, look. if you look at the circumstances, it's it's really grim for Renegades. Not only are they behind 8-2, four players, after fully buying up on Cloud9, have more than $10,000 in the bank. That's a nuts economy now for Cloud9. They, Cloud9 have nothing to fear, pretty much, for the rest of this half. Even if they lose a couple of rounds, even two rounds in a row, they're still good. They can still do damage. So this is tough. This is really tough for Renegades. Well, Ren I mean, obviously, Renegades with the... Uh, with the loss on uh, Dust 2 in overtime <laughs> earlier in this tournament, you know, they, they, they are another team that could struggle as well. You mentioned the fact that Cloud9 have, been, have had massive leaves on Mirage. So have Renegades, both teams have, sh there's a reason why they're 0-2 so far in this tournament. Both teams have, uh, have been found wanting a little bit. See what they could do this round as they're going to be charging right into nothing. That's a good pick up. Followed up even while flashed and a kill on Skadoodle there. Picks up the rifle, takes another one in. As a one man army in this round, but it's still not enough. The rest of his teammates didn't really do anything, so ends up losing the round anyway. 9 2. I mean, the fact is that A push worked. That whole A execute was so good for Renegades. It was only the fact that they. Because Automatic took so much time, they were already falling back. They thought, well, they're not going to fight it. They're just looking for exit kills. So they were already falling back on the ramp by that point in time. Why not try that same A execute again? You know, if it worked once, then just go for it one more time and see if it's going to play out. Right now, they're just looking for a more of a default type setup here. And, and the, 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 you're right, because the default is not working. They're getting picked by Ska. They're getting picked by Automatic. They, they, they're losing players and not winning duels. And so you're right. Throw, throw a Chaos round in there. Go for a rush play. Rush B, rush A, rush something. Really just throw luck to the wind. Try and get a chaotic situation going where maybe, you know, through shooting somebody in the back, you're able to get an advantage and close around. But this is uh, this is one, it seems like a tendency of Renegades when things get tough, they slow down quite a bit. We've seen it both days so far in this major. And uh, they do seem to struggle, you know, getting that momentum going or being willing to just throw the risk out there. Hi, right, there's a need for you, Azza, down to 25. Or 75, rather. Sorry, he takes 25 damage. A bit annoying. They are going to be getting the mid control, at least. It seems like they're doing a, f a fairly decent job of that right now. But they still need to figure out what they want to do with it. They have a couple of... Well, they actually have one more smoke on JKS, and he's not even in middle. So when these smokes fade in the middle, they're going to be super exposed. So 
They have a couple of more seconds. There's the one smoke fading. So now you still are on Azar in a bit of a weird position. They don't know that no one is... They could be someone in window or catwalk right now. We can tell there aren't, but they are going to be sneaking up again. They're allowing Azza to get really close into Connected, which is interesting. And now they're going to be walking in. What is going on? Yeah, exactly. Two people dropped out. Scott's been dropped for 20 seconds, and now Stewie's out. What is this? Oh, I have no idea. I'm assuming we'll get an update on that situation because they dropped before anyone had died, right? <sighs> they dropped. Yeah, exactly. They dropped like way into it. That is incredibly confusing. They well, sort of seem to be playing out the round anyway, so maybe just because no one called a pause. I mean, it's still a two on three. Shroud and Automatic are still close. I mean, you could still, even from here, win this. That would be obscene if it actually made, if they managed to make it work. Should be impossible now that Shroud's walking into a 1v3. There we go. Yam is going to take him down. That's, that's incredibly confusing. Um, <laughs> apparently... It's over a minute, and they just couldn't restart the round because a minute had already ticked past. So exactly. that is the official explanation for what happened. That's uh, slightly upsetting, I would say. Mildly frustrating. Mildly frustrating, and a little bit of a shake of the head there from Shroud. But, okay, you're up 9-3 still. CT side, you have a fantastic economy. Shake it off. You're good. You're still in a good situation. It happened, I mean, it happened to G2 earlier in the tournament where they dropped the guy in a clutch scenario. Damage had already been done, and sometimes that's just how it is. Maybe, uh, you know, your shoe ties come unlaced in a tennis match and you trip and you miss a key point. Sometimes, sometimes things happen in competition, and you just have to roll with it. Yeah, you have to. I mean, you're right, though. The mentality sort of has to be, let's just move on from this, but both these teams have shown that they have a hard time doing that, and... I can understand why it must be difficult. If the, the pressure is is incredible in this particular game, just because they're both 0-2, lose here and you're not going to go to the major. And, it, and this major has been such a long ways coming. That if you don't make it, you know Christmas is ruined. You're gonna be, <laughs> you're just gonna be at home thinking about you know all the things that you could have been celebrating, and now instead you're just. And it, I can't even imagine. The timing is ungodly at the moment. Gallons of eggnog, Anders. Gallons of eggnog. <laughs> yes, that's exactly the solution. Thirteenth round is coming up, and we have a similar setup as the last time. Cloud9. Why would they change their setup anyway? It's all working out pretty well for them, except yeah. when they have players disconnect in the middle of the round. Nothing, and Stewie are holding on the A bomb site, and it looks like we're gonna have a more typical A execute with you still holding in the middle. He just has to stay alive and not. Die. I never mind. Correct. <laughs> well. They are trying to go for the sneak out on A site here, Renegades. They're down their, their mid flanker, so that's a bit painful. That opens it up for Automatic to push T spawn as well. So now they're on a timer, but Rick is going to find the shot on Skadoodle. So there's the push, the opening that they need to get onto the A site. Automatic is hauling now. He's going to be in pit in seconds. So Renegades, they need to get in here and get this bomb planted immediately. Automatic is getting close. He's closing in. Does Rick realize this? Oh, this is. This could be painful, Anders. He can completely shut them down. Two players are at his mercy. There's the one. Goes for the big spray. The spray transfer from Automatic, and now a man advantage for Cloud9. Incredibly well done. JKS and Yam are left two versus three, and they're not in good positions. Especially JKS is going to have a hard time. That smoke going up. He can't help out Yam. He can't even get through that smoke. They're all going to be watching him. Automatic with four kills, and that's the ace to close out the round. Automatic is actually just a god in this game. It's 18, zero, and four for him. He's wrecking Renegades right now, and this is what's insane about the flank that he just did. The first time he did this flank, he, he beat them on timing by being so slow they weren't expecting him. And this time he was so fast that you can tell that the internal clock for Rikki and Azza, because everyone has that. When you're, when you're doing this play, you know roughly when. If there is a flank, you have to turn around for it. Right. But because he ran with his knife out all the way from middle all the way to that ramp, they just weren't expecting it. So both those plays are just timing plays that are incredible. My god. Oh boy, this is where it gets fun. Nothing calling. The, a very quick play coming in here from Renegades. I love to see it. I don't like seeing Azza getting taken down point blank, unfortunately. Is Stillo going to follow suit? No, he hits the shot, but Automatic is there to trade the kill. And a two-man advantage now for Cloud9, and they aren't even getting close to getting the bomb planted here, Renegades. They are floundering, although JKS is putting up a fight. Sprays down Shroud and Stewie, but he's got 31 HP, no grenades. Automatic and Skadoodle still alive with full utility. And now, well... Starts to get into the mind games. He's got a minute 15 left on this clock to play with. Sadly, the bomb is all the way out there. If he had the bomb now, he could, you know, he could start walking back into middle or B or whatever he wanted to do. But he sort of has to move forward eventually. And they are just waiting. Automatic is going to go back and check and make sure there's not it's some deep black going though. on. It's dropped in sandwich, though. He can get to it. 
Yeah, it's dropped in sandwich. That's Cloud exactly. Automatic is moving mid because he doesn't know. They don't have eyes on the bomb right now, Cloud9. He's got a chance. He's got something at least to work with here. 50 seconds. And he's got the bomb, and Cloud9 don't know that he has the bomb now. But they're in good positions regardless. Gadoodle is not worried about a flank right now. Automatic is the one who's mobile and checking and making sure that JKS isn't doing anything weird. So still, I would say, an extremely hard round for JKS to win. Also, he has no grenades. Going to be walking right into Skadoodle, <laughs> who's just been steady, waiting there for a minute or so. Now will be another round, 11-3, as we move into the 15th round here. Cloud9, I say this similar, surely they can't lose this. Third timeout used by Renegades. I mean, I, I don't... Not gonna, not gonna go there. <laughs> not going to go for the cast of curse. Yeah, exactly, and this is what I wanted to say, right? But I mean, well, E-League season one, these are all a bit quite quite a long time ago, and so you can kind of discount the lower two stats here, but this DreamHack Winter win, that was a key one. Renegades got into the finals of DreamHack Winter as well. They lost to Gambit, but a finals for Renegades, it kind of boded well coming into this qualifier. Like, these guys, maybe they can get something done. Look at this, they're hitting shots. They're going to finals of land tournaments. And, uh, well, it really hasn't worked out for them here, unfortunately. Like, they've struggled since the beginning. And they're 0-2 yes. right now. Both of these teams are 0-2, because the same could be said for Cloud9. Oh, the sprays are coming out from the Australians, uh, sorry, from, uh, from Cloud9 in the CT spawn. So maybe that's the, the way to victory. Get the momentum up and running, some, some vandalism. Mm -hmm. Why they, are, they are on the CT side. Shouldn't they be fighting that? Hey, Anders, do you know where we're going again? A. Well, obviously. We have gone A roughly 13 times so far this half. That actually is a problem, you're right. Especially because the A def defense, especially the A retake is really good for Cloud9. That grenade landing right in the face of R Ricky and he's going to be going down to the follow-up Molotov and this whole round is gone. They didn't have much uh, equipment anyway, but that's going to be the end of the first half. 12-3 in favor of Cloud9 with Automatic showing up with 21 kills and only four deaths. Yeah. This guy is out of control. The, the game yesterday, he dropped 30. 31 versus Tyloo yesterday, and that was a close match. In a way, Tyloo looked in control, but Automatic never gave up. He Automatic might, kept fighting. He might actually prevent himself from getting a 30 bomb just because the game will end too soon. He's actually cheating himself out of that. 16th round is coming up here. It's Renegades now on the CT side, and Cloud9 going to be on the T side here with a lot of utility being bought already. He would be the only... If he got, an, if he got a 30 bomb now, he would be the only player so far to get two 30 bombs in this tournament. So, not a bad not a bad feather in your cap. That definitely feels good. That could definitely work out for him. He's also one of the only guys to hold an ace so far out of the other six. So, this is uh this is sick. This is sick. I mean, I'm I'm so far at least for all the Cloud9 fans, for all the North American fans out there, even though Renegades kind of like a quasi North American now cuz they still live here. Uh, you know, Cloud9 going through at least till tomorrow. That would be big. And would. why are we doing this to Stillo? Poor guy. <laughs> Just to show that uh, Jordan is essentially doubling the ADR of Ustilo, that, that's uh, rough, definitely very rough. All right, and we have Captain Moses. I actually love this picture, I think it's amazing. And you know, he anybody would snap, right? Look at look at those eyes, look at the defeat. He's been sitting next to Thorin for two days straight and nearly yeah. a third one today. If someone that would, That's what happens, look at that face right there. If someone could Photoshop Duncan and Richard in on the other side, yes. you know, Moses just fighting to keep the desk even half, even halfway sane, that would be, that would be a good thing. All right then, um, if they win this pistol, they could realistically get up to twelve six. If they win the fourth round, then, and and then we're looking at like eight eight twelve type scoreline. Mm -hmm. So there is a path forward, but it but it hinges on those key rounds, the first one obviously, and the fourth round. You win those two, you are actually capable of winning the game. But if you lose either one of them. I don't know if you're going to be able to, to stay alive mentally as well. I think it's too much. So let's see if they can. They have all armor and pistols on the Renegade side. They're just ready to go for the classic duel, the USP versus Glock Glock range, or against this uh, Tech 9 for Stewie. I like it. Stewie going to take point with that Tech 9 as well. He's looking for headshots, but a nice bank Molotov there into window. It's going to force Rick back. There's a man on short, so Azza might be able to hit some headshots here if he does go for the peak, but he refuses to do so, and that gives them the opening. Skadoodle takes down Rick and now Stewie, he's infiltrated. Whoa, the headshot from Astillo, though. So we're back into a four on four. Automatic trying to bring it back as well, taking down as a yes, eventually, longest duel of his life. But that bomb is on the A site. Only problem is it's out in the open. 
Yeah, and you're still on. Jack Hesser actually covering it very nicely. Yam sneaking in, looking for the click. He's going to get an automatic, and now things are looking better here for Renegades. They desperately need this round. They can't afford to let it go. Nothing also being tagged up, and all the utility that Cloud9 had, it's all gone. None of it going to make any difference in this round here. Nothing getting overwhelmed. That's the bomb now. Isolated, and you're still going to pick up the kill. Great job from Renegades. In spite of Cloud9 being able to infiltrate the connector and window so deeply, and I, I wish I could see that round from Asus point of view because mm. look if you look at me he does get flashed you can see him flashed in the round but he's unflashed at this point in time and he just doesn't get anything done that was dangerous i would say this is tough man for renegades cloud nine picked up the ct pistol the first half pistol right but renegades haven't been bad on pistol rounds they picked up both pistols yesterday versus clg on d2 and they split the pistols versus nip on d2 as well so i mean they're picking up pistols now they just need to be able to capitalize, as you said, right? It's going to come down to the 19th round, essentially, unless Cloud9 can get a bomb plant here. Stewie sneaking in. Great infiltrate, but he's going to miss the chance. That's a bit of a slip up there that we don't normally expect from Stewie. Three versus four here. Rike, a lot of SMGs. In fact, only SMGs in play right now for Renegade, so they're quite confident they can win this round. And they are not wrong either. They're doing a fine job at the moment. Ricky mm. picking up another couple of kills. Good for him if he wants that AWP later on. That's, yes, exactly. I'm glad that you bring that up because Rick is so important. That's what, When I see him getting kills with the UMP like this, it means that he's going to have the AWP to start. It means that he'll have nades and Kevlar to back it. Like, perfect situation for Renegades because Rikke has that explosive quality. He can come through and get crazy shots with the AWP, high-impact rounds. So they desperately need him to get on that AWP to get him the money for it. Look at that, clean aim so far. So 12 to five, Cloud9 still with a huge lead, but pistol round for them basically, eco round here, building up for that 19th round. Whereas Renegades still farming with the SMGs. What's also interesting here is the fact that, the fact that Cloud9 had such a terrible uh, game on their T side last time they played Mirage, it sort of means they should have had some time to adjust, right? They, they could maybe guess that this map was gonna be picked in the veto. I think they, that's likely that they could have predicted that. So. They must have had some time in the hotel or even here at the studios to go through everything and just think about, you know, what did we do wrong and how did we make it work? Because the same can be like the thing is, though, there's a difference, right? Renegades have a coach, PK, who's very involved in the strats, very involved in their tactics and demo review, that sort of thing, right? That's his role on the team. Cloud9 don't have anybody like that. It's tough. It's got to be Stewie, one of the least experienced players on the team, who's going to go for that kind of lead role. That's a that's a tough scenario for Stewie to find himself in. And it's, it is an edge that Renegades should have. We just did not see it at all on their T side. CT side, though, this is where it gets interesting. Cloud9, are they going to have that depth of strategy to change things up enough to catch Renegades off guard? I mean, they got the first part of the equation, Renegades, by winning the pistol round. Now, can they get the second one, too, and maybe pick it up here? If they can, they jump from six to eight, and we suddenly have a very interesting game on our hands, and potentially another heartbreaker for Cloud9. You have to, you have to believe that it can't happen for a second time here, the qualifiers, that would uh, almost be too much to handle. But the bomb is dropped back in T-spawn right now for Cloud9, and they are setting up for just a default mid-take here, just trying to get get the control in and see if they can work something off of that. We need to just keep eyes, basically, on, auto on Automatic and Stewie still, the two linchpins of this team. On the first day, when you were watching Cloud9 versus FaZe, it felt like every round that they actually did something right on T-side was Stewie throwing himself through a smoke, throwing himself around an angle, hitting crazy shots. It was him just like pulling Cloud9 closer to the finish line, right, each and every time. If it wasn't him making it happen, nothing happened. And whereas, you know, Automatic is just there to get the steady shots, right, to put that pressure on Renegades and hit the shots. But still, we need to keep an eye on Stewie because I think he's going to be the linchpin here. Which is tough for him, considering the fact that he's also got a lead. He's got a call. Stewie will get that kill, but they lost automatic in the meantime, so not exactly a great trade there. But Shroud hitting a headshot on Azza. That's the way to get started. Now, the deep in connector, Yam and Ricky are the only ones holding onto this bomb site. Yustilo, he's pushing out aggressively, but he's miles away. It's not going to be here in time. And that Molotov right in the corner. They can't catch Yam running out, but that's still a great grenade. And Shroud will make it work. Double kill here for the Canadian player. And Ricky going to be going down. Yustilo now in a one on four. He is coming in with a flank, and if his teammates were alive, it'd be great, but they're not. And as soon as he fires that rifle, the round is pretty much over. Yeah, that's, that's I mean, they're just going to know. And it's, it's really a case of just save the rifle. Yeah. Just save it. 
I mean, you can try and make, if you can get one more kill or two more kills. Or go for the ninja. Hope they don't walk out this way and just see if you can sneak your way in, but... Pull an automatic at this point. Yeah, look at this. They're actually walking out the other way. Skadoodle's still hanging around. All right. And nothing going to be going down. You steal I think he's still trying for it because let's say he did get the kill on Skadoodle. It's a chance that Stewie and Shroud couldn't get to him in time. I mean, you're still making the absolute most of that situation. Credit to that one, but um, it's still the 13th round for Cloud9. You know, nothing dies because he was shooting that op. He was shooting that op behind Firebox. I don't know why. He was just emptying his. And then he runs back around reloading and it still shoots him in the face. It's like. That's just a face palm kind of moment for for nothing there. It's like, well, Ooh. the Mo Molotov combination there. Mm -hmm. Ricky had no chance. He had to vacate that corner. Thirteen six being the scoreline. Uh, we're moving into the twentieth round. No op for Ricky. It's just painful to see. Looks like he got dropped in M that M4 perhaps that was saved in the last round. But again, no sniper rifle for Ricky. Still competent with the rifles, but you really do want to see that off in his hands, whereas Skadoodle, of course, has got his. Skadoodle ready for the mid aggro coming through here. There is a triple push coming up from Renegades. They're looking to take the fight. Ostil is going to find a kill on nothing. That's going to start, but that was over in B Halls. And so now it's down to Shroud, just on the edge of the smoke. Catches one, spraying all over the place. This is out and out chaos at this point. Ricky, Ostil, and Azza all taking damage, but they come out ahead. Yeah, that catch at the end, automatic being caught by Ricky, definitely really important. Oh, oh but Skadoodle coming back into it. The first shot may be one thing, but the second one there on Azza, a beautiful work. And now Stewie, look at that, he's clearing the A bomb site, Cloud9. They should be out of this round, but somehow they're still hanging on to it. Oh boy. He's cleared the angles now. He's worried about jungle. He hasn't seen anybody in CT. And this is where it gets tricky because Ska's going to make his way across. Ska still has a smoke as well. He could get a block on jungle with it. He doesn't even use it. They have a Molotov on Stewie as well. And if Renegades lose this round, they're going to be ecoing. They can't afford to lose. They have to win it. Otherwise, they're going to be out of the qualifier, I'm afraid. And Molotov, oh, sorry, Smoke goes up to the ramp. Not quite sure where the rest are. Flick from Scar, uh, Scar not quite going to hit. Still a two on two. And Stewie is right there to help out. A lot of damage being put into Ricky already. Now, Molotov hasn't been used yet. Stewie's waiting until the last possible second. Skadoodle goes down, but they only have one kit. Did he miss he missed that? It. He missed it. Oh, no. It actually doesn't cover the bomb. That's a big misstep, but the flashbang is in. Ricky not defusing yet. Stewie waiting on the other side. Going to go for the AK spray. He goes down. Oh, my God. That one Molotov could have made a huge difference in that 2v1. Small mistakes. Nerves. So painful, especially after all the good work that Ska did. I mean, you're still getting caught out in the middle of Africa there, but this second shot here, boom. That's what brought it back. That was a two on four that turned into a two on two, thanks to this opera right now. Skadoodle, it, it, I mean, he was hungry for the second kill, however. They had no idea where JKS was, though. I think that's the main thing. It looked like they thought that JKS was wrapping from a pit or something along those lines, going for some kind of flank. So they really wanted to kill off Rike. Just didn't really pan out this time for Cloud9, but still. It looks like another timeout, and just to note, this is the last timeout that Renegades have. They've used four now, so this is it. Renegades, you're just going to have to count on yourselves. <laughs> Why are you saying that? <laughs> <laughs> Shave his hand is if Cloud9 lose. He needs to, we need to have a picture, though. He needs to do like a selfie with that kind of tweet, right? Like, I mean, that's some confidence, and they are ahead six rounds, but they losing that one was... I don't know. I mean, that 2v2 was theirs. They had the advantage going into that 2v2, and they didn't make it work. Molotov there, going to force Ricky off a little bit. He's actually going to cancel it out with a smoke and just make sure he can retake that position. And now will he give him a kill? That's the big question. Yeah, Cloud9 should be aware of it, though. They see that smoke going down so quick behind the Molotov. That's got to tell them something, and they're just looking for the fight. There you go. Shroud leads the way. Stewie, he gets flashed right into the wall. They line up, and that's the double kill for Yam. Swaps back to the AWP as well. Doesn't expect nothing to go for the quick flank of his own, however. But Ska's got to be careful. He's taking damage right now. Again, somehow we're into a 2v2. Yeah, what a lot of pace coming in from Cloud9 here. So fast interconnector up the ramp now. You're right, another two on two. Damage being put out to nothing. Skadoodle going to be going down now. It's all on Jordan. That grenade landing right in his face. And the bomb out in the middle of nowhere here. Has to walk in, try and see if maybe... He can clutch this one. He doesn't really have the health for it, but with an AWP, if he just gets the first shot in, it's at least possible for him to do it. He feels like you're still, still in that corner, and he's right. There's the kill, but he doesn't realize the next player, JKS, is in window. He knows. He knows. He heard the vents getting shot out. That's the key bit. That's why he turns back to jungle there. He heard the vents, and so there's the, the audio information that he needed. So he has at least a way to triangulate where JKS may be coming from. 
goes down. JKS has a Molotov, so if nothing puts himself in an awkward position, he could end up not even being able to peek it. They're coming up there. Oh, oh, there's the headshot. JKS taking out nothing. That's so clean. Nothing. You can tell his scope was a little bit off. It wasn't quiet at the stairwell. Ah, oh, that's tough. Nothing. That was a battle. What a battle from Cloud9, though. Tooth and nail, but Renegades, they withstand it. And there we go. JKS, really slow start at the beginning of this half. He was at like two kills, 10 rounds into this first half. Now he's up to 12, and that was a key round from him to keep his team alive in this tournament. Just to remind you, I mean, this is 0-2 for each of these teams. They have lost twice. You lose three times, that's it, you're going home. And we might actually have a tactical timeout being used here by Cloud9. Okay, then. So it's basically Renegades. Now they get a free timeout. This is excellent. The Renegades have used all of their timeouts. This is the first timeout we've seen here from Cloud9. What we really need is to show the, the tweet that Simple just did. Oh. Um, Let's we'll see, we, we can see if we can get the production crew to, to find it. We've got evidence for it. I'm, I, I won't reveal too much, but I will say I'm all in on, on Renegades here. I think I, 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 they need to come back and win this game right now. Yeah, because basic what, what Simple tweeted. Okay, I get it. Now I want to see. Come on, guys. Please bring up the Simple <laughs> tweet. I just hope that they can show it. Like he isn't. No, it's one of the one of the milder ones. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. Good. It's not. It's not the. It's not the super simple. <laughs> Never change. Which is simple. my favorite version of simple, by the way. You know that. You know who uh, Simple's biggest fanboy is on on Earth on the planet. Tell me. Dazed. Day. I don't blame him. I think Simple's amazing. I think they would get along great in a team. Well, look at this setup here from Cloud9. Still very aggressive, in spite of having very nearly nothing. They're going for the full execute and. Given the setup here, Yam is going to be behind a smoke. JKS is going to be a bit alone. So unless JKS can pick up two kills here, it can get interesting. It can be tricky for Renegades. They got to keep those players alive. JKS falling back into the corner. They actually cut up the bomb site instead of directly smoking off Yam. So a slight variation as to the normal play. Ricky going to be all the way up the stairwell. He's in trouble and he's going to be going down. Skadoodle will find the kill. Yam still alive. They haven't even checked this corner yet. And uh, Yam picking up two kills. JKS goes down without taking anyone with him. And that's a problem. You still owe an Asa now. Two versus three. They need this retake. They've been able to do it before, but this time it's really critical that they do it. Cloud9 are inches away from taking this spot and moving on in the qualifier, sending Renegades home. And that's a big step forward there. Automatic picking up a triple kill, putting himself at 26 and 14-8 overall in favor of Cloud9. Still a chance for him to be the first guy to get double, triple, uh, double 30 bombs. If Cloud9 loses this game, I will gift my knife to On Fire. And what? This is why you are. Get out. Obviously. Look, I I sell out really cheaply sometimes. <laughs> so it doesn't take a lot, you know. It's a skin here and there, and I'm good to go. I think it's like, We did drop someone, I think, in the yeah, end. Yeah, we did. We did again. I mean, Cloud9 are not having any luck. This is the third time that somebody's dropped for them in, these, uh, in this match so far. So. This is uh, frustrating, to say the least. And well, because it happened so early on, obviously, we're restarting it, money will get reset, and we'll just get right back into this. It shouldn't, it should be a quick fix here. So, I mean, this is just, yeah, restarting the round, guys, don't worry. I mean, this is just wild, man. The fact that they actually win that, though, with just a no fear pistol rush onto A, that's shattering if you're Renegades to your morale. That's so difficult to come back from, to get your heart back into it, when you know that you had the edge, every edge, to just close the round, make it easy, and you instead just get run over in the end. Ah. And, I mean, the, the weird part about the round is the fact that Yam gets two kills, but then JKS in the corner, even though they didn't check it, he just he couldn't really put himself into play properly, so just ends up crumbling entirely. 14-8 is the scoreline here, and... That's such a deep cut into Renegade's economy, but obviously saving, not really an option, is it, Samla? No, it's back to the wall time again here. And looking at JKS, I mean, yeah, he had it, such a cold start, but he's only up to 12 kills. PK right now, the coach that you see on your screen, I mean, he's got to be trying to figure out what they can do. Not allowed to talk during technical pauses as well, and Renegades have used all of their timeouts, so basically he gets to just be a spectator at this point. He's just sitting there like, please, guys, please, don't do this. Go out there, get kills. 
Man, I mean, the, the Australians really have been looking promising lately. You know, they've even going into this qualifier, I think people were excited that, uh, I mean, I think Moses even had them as, as a potential dark horse, which I actually don't think is a ridiculous thing to say, but no. it's just not really working out for them right now. Oh, what a shot from Jordan taking down Yam and following up on Yusilo. Great prediction coming out from the push into underpass there and nothing going to go for it one more time. Reloading actually throws away the AK. Trying to see if he can find another gun instead. Stewie picks up Ricky and this is just all falling apart here. Definitely going to be match point right now for Cloud9. Where's Automatic? Get some kills, Automatic. What is he at right now? He's at 26, so he needs to get a quad kill in the last round potentially here. Where Renegades are going to have to force by it with nothing pretty much. So, um... Come on, just put Automatic in a place where he's going to be able to mow down four players. Everybody else just chill and let him go to work. 24th round here. Renegades, they need seven rounds in a row getting into overtime. And they have no money. They were different if we were talking about, you know, the double up auto sniper type setup where they have everything they could possibly want. But they've got nearly nothing to make this work. Yam going to go for a bit of a peek in the middle there with just the Deagle to try and find it. Pretending it's an AWP or a scout or something is the best he can do, make believe. Mm. This is just Cloud9 needing to chill right now. They need to just relax, deep breath, and get the job done here. You're right, they've struggled as well. I mean, they're 0-2, and they've definitely struggled with these sorts of situations, closing maps. But they should know that at this point, they have everything going their way. They're a superior team to Renegades on this map so far. Just a matter of closing in, and they're gonna go B. This is the shift, this is the change coming in from Renegades, or rather from Cloud9. They haven't gone B yet this half, so it's a good time to try and change it up and hit that B site. Hope that they've been caught sleeping here. Still, oh, pushed aggro, gonna get checked though, and nothing's gonna find the kill. And there it is, Rihe and Yam, they're miles away, and even worse, Stewie's in behind them, so they're sandwiched in. If they try and rotate over to B, which they have to, they're gonna get shot in the back. Stewie doesn't connect with that spray. Not sure why he even took the fight. That's definitely not necessary, but now nothing in Skadoodle left. We did have a drop in the middle yeah. of it, I think, so we'll see. Bomb is ticking right now, and nothing, and Skadoodle, look at the angle, they've got a really good shot on this, he's gonna miss the first one, nothing dropping low as well, Skadoodle gonna put up a smoke, he's wasting a lot of time, I think, where he could have maybe had a shot there, the Tech Nine's out, he's actually given up on the AWP, he's gonna go down, nothing picking up the kill, and now, it is a one-on-one, -on -one. Yam on the other side, nothing, not gonna get the spray, Yam turning around, he does not have a kit, but he's got enough time for it regardless, so, 15 to nine here, Renegades, bit of luck, Going to get another round in. Was he alive when he dropped? And I think he was. I think he was. This is unbelievable. Cloud9, I mean, it's like fate is conspiring against them at this point to make it as difficult as possible to survive this major qualifier. How many people, how many people are going to drop out of service when there's already been damage done, when it's already too late in the round to restart it? The gods just really want me to have that knife, so I'm not, <laughs> that's what it is, I think. They just... And Sponge is like eternal love and undying gratitude, I guess. Man, Rick had just got a free op out of that as well. Yeah, they're going to get a... I mean, they have a real chance now, Renegades. They do. Cloud9 have got money to buy, but now Renegades are actually going to get a fairly decent buy out of this. Look at it this way. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? So Cloud9, if they make it through this test, then, you know, they're going to be... They're going to be in a good position as a team. They will have survived a lot in this qualifier. And maybe they can make it all the way through. Who knows? They are going to be... T if they win this, they're going to be 2-1. and one. Yes. And then... 1-2. 1-2. 1-2, yeah. So they would... Yeah, they would have to uh, to win another couple of matches to make it all the way in. And that's the beauty of this Swiss system is that it's really it really is going to kind of remove the fluky aspect of it. You know, winning two best of ones and that's it, you're through. Like, it's only going to get harder from here, Anders. So if you've struggled so far in the first two days, you're not in for a joyride on the, ne on the next two. Yam gets caught out in the open, but Rick is there to trade versus Shroud. Still a four on four, still favors Cloud9. And Cloud9, there's the key kill again, nothing, opening up the B site. As are now in position. Flashbang not going to do anything to him. Nothing is one bullet away from death, so should be an easy kill of the first one. There's the headshot, but now walking in, the flashbangs are through. Skadoodle, he couldn't see anything there, and that's a problem. As a still standing his ground, and that's going to buy time for Ricky to come in. JKS has already been taken out. Stewie is down next in line now. It's a 2 on 2, but being shot in the back. Automatic coming in with a big kill there, and now they're going to rotate back. Why not? They have that control. They know already that Ricky is over there, so they're just going to swap it out. This is genius positional play coming out of cloud nine automatic hits the jump as well so now he's got the he's got murder hole covered Ricket is he gonna pre-fire it is he gonna pre-fire it he's gonna have to pre-fire it go for it oh he doesn't hit the shot 16 to 9 the end is here an automatic and one kill away from 30 
That is uh, upsetting, but still very well done for Cloud9. They survive the attempt at a comeback there for Renegades, and obviously they're going to continue the quantifiers. Renegades will not. They're